I'm Nick Helm and welcome to the Film Quiz Podcast Halloween Special! <laughs> Live at the Pleasance Islington in London! In this horror themed special, we'll ask three movie mad contestants if they can tell their Halloweens from their Halle Berries, uh, their Hellraisers from their Brendan Frasers, and their ginger snaps from their Harry Potter film when Ron finally tells Harry Potter to piss off. So um, our competitive critters will need to avoid wrong turns with our questions to make sure they let the right one or answers in uh, to, to, to win the show. The script is full of horror film references. Um, I personally uh, hate when people do this, uh, when they just put puns in, in exchange for genuine humour, uh, you'll notice it on uh, Bargain Hunt and, uh, and uh, any of the Hairy Bikers TV shows. But, um, but this is what we're... Uh, you know, um, I, I refuse to put any work into this show other than the immediately standing here in front of you. So um, you're hearing this for the first time uh, as I'm reading it for the first time. <laughs> Um, uh, so let's meet today's human centipede of contestants. Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. We spent all day stitching a master mouth, so you might as well bloody clap them. Right, let's meet today's human centipede of contestants. First up from San Diego, California, he's a Leicester Comedy Festival dub double nominee who features on Amazon Prime's Love Struck High. Provocative and risk taking, he's also amassed over 250,000 followers on TikTok, raking in more than 5 million likes, and he has his own cult podcast, which asks comedians to talk about what their life would be like without social media. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Russell Hicks! That's right. Up next, he's a British-born Chinese professional poker player and comedian who reached the final of the BBC New Comedy Awards. He's won the Edinburgh Fringe Joke of the Year Award, haven't we all, mate? Co-hosted e Force The Hangover Games and made a name for himself on YouTube with his comedy character, Mark Liu. Guys and gals, it's Ken Cheng! From Cambridge. Um, and, and last but by no means least, they're a stand up comedian, writer, I can't even pronounce the word comedian. Um, <laughs> And last but by no means least, they're a stand-up comedian, writer, podcaster, and drag king. They've co-founded the Queer Women and Non-Binary Comedy Night, The Lol Word, and co-host the cult hit podcast Secret Dinosaur Cult and the Drag King Cast. Their writing credits also include the hugely successful Sex Education. Please give a round of applause for Jodie Mitchell! <laughs> From Cambridge! Ah, yeah, great. Um, uh, hey, hey, how you all doing? You all right? Yeah, right? good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah, good, good, good. Um, uh, what's your, what's your, uh, JD, what's your, what's your favourite film? I'm going to, I'll go on a horror theme. Yeah. I'm going to go 28 Days Later. It's your favourite? That's going to be my favourite horror of, of all the horror. Of all the, of all the horror. But like, okay, just to get like a bit of a grasp, um, what is your favourite film if it's not horror? Oh, my favourite film of all time, I'm going to go Thelma and Louise. It's a classic, it's yeah, a classic. It is good. It Look, is. That ripple was just respect. <laughs> <laughs> respect for the choice. No, it's a good one. Yeah, I really like Gina Davis. <laughs> she's an Olympic standard um, archer. Did you know that? I didn't know that, actually. Yeah, she's, she, she, I don't know if she actually competed, but she got to, like, Olympic standard as an archer. Um, she's absolutely fucking incredible as a human being. Uh, and uh, Susan Sarandon's all right as well. Um, <laughs> Ken, uh, uh, who, uh, who's, what's your favourite film? Just... Uh, I'm actually not that into film. Yeah, really. wicked. OK, cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, do you have, mm, no. do you have a favourite scary film? Uh, Alien, probably. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, first one. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, it is good. I'm, I'm not. Really, I'm just sort of like warming you up, you know. I'm not, I'm not really getting into it. Russell, what's your favourite film? Um, well, I've not seen any of the show I've been listening, so I don't want to. Uh, have you seen The Matador? The Matador. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see yeah. what you've done there. All right, and yeah. um, you will not be rewarded for pre-planning anything on this. All right, so just fucking okay. Yeah, I have seen The Matador uh, thirty years ago. 
uh, before it was made. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, great. Okay, brilliant. So, um, now, now um, normally, guys, um, we would be introducing my best friend and soon to be yours, uh, Hugh Davies, uh, as our resident scorekeeper. Um, but um, he's, he's away today, so we've got a replacement, and uh, I've, I've been led to believe that he is uh, just, as, just as good with the numbers. Put your hands together for Bill El Zafar! <laughs> How are you doing, Bill? Are you all right? Very, very good, thank you. Uh, good, yes. Um, How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, that's <laughs> nice of you. Thank you for asking me, Bill. Al. Um, I'm very well, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Um, uh, what, what, did, what have you been up to this week? Watch films. You watch films? Watch oh, films. Hang on, what, can I just ask, what are you dressed as? This is... Uh, I can see, because, sorry, sorry um, we were all meant to come. I'm assuming that that's just your shirt, Russell. Uh, no, I'm actually a Canadian. Oh, right. Have you, and that's your, that's your costume tonight? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. Um, so we've got three of us in costume, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I've, I've come as a male comedian. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've also come as a male comedian. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Ken discussed it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm a skeleton on fire, it okay. says. It said it was skeleton on fire, because they ran out of the normal skeleton. Do you want to stand up and yeah. show, show your little costume off? Thank you. I mean, that was, that was probably not worth the money that you paid for it, right? <laughs> it's too expensive, yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, the well, arms aren't on fire, though. Yeah. 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 It's just the... Just, the, just, just the all of this. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. No, it's great. <laughs> it's great. So, um, so what, have you, what films have you watched this week? I watched uh, Halle Berry's Catwoman. <laughs> okay, speaking of um, horror films, yes. Yeah. Very scary, very good. Has anyone seen it? Yeah, it's good. Is that the level of enthusiasm? I mean, it is Halle Berry's Catwoman. <laughs> is but it called Halle Berry's Catwoman? Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think it is. I think it is. There's not even another film called Catwoman, uh. but, um, but she insisted. She, uh, she insisted that it was mm. called Halle Berry's Catwoman. Uh, is that all you watched? I've, uh, the Crow Four Wicked Prayer. The fourth crow the film. The fourth crow Who film. Who plays the crow in that one? Edward Furlong. Edward Furlong, right. Oh, wow. yeah, Did you know that? Um, no, well, I knew he was in one of them. I thought it might be the third one, but like, um, uh, I've only seen the first, I saw the first one and then I mm. saw the second one and then mm. the second one was not like, you know. Well, part four is a return to form. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Really? Hmm? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, okay. Two best films, Halle Berry's Catwoman and The Crow Four <laughs> Weekend. <laughs> Did you get them in a box set together? So, what are you dressed as? Um, today, um, I um, well, a uh, little bit of a little bit of a backstory to this. Uh, this is uh, this is Dracula's cape. Um, everyone, Ooh. thank you very much. This is Dracula's cape, <coughs> and um, this is uh, this is like a, like a wolf hand. Mm. Yeah, and uh, this is a uh, this is a top hat. Mm. Uh, like a white top hat, like um, like you know, like um, like an aristocrat might wear. <laughs> and uh, this is a this is a boiler suit. Ah. Um, uh, and and I this is it's kind of like a bit of a mishmash of ideas um, because uh, Howard, our producer, was meant to provide me with a costume, but um, uh, because we were at the weekend, they locked themselves out of their offices. So this is just what I had lying around in my flat. Um, That's true. I, I, made, I made the effort. You One had thing, all that lying around in your flat? Well, yeah. Not, uh, <laughs> to, to be fair to Howard, he bought the cape, oh. but everything else is mine. Why do you have um, the wolf hand? Uh, thanks for asking me, Ken. Uh, it's because um, I wrote a horror-themed musical where I played uh, a werewolf, and uh. I needed a quick change. It's more of like a... Um, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's, it's more like a symbolic uh, thing than anything else. Um, I, I, I had two, but I've lost the other one. Um, right, okay. So now it says here we're going to do some fun facts about you guys. Uh, there's three of you. We've got two fun facts. Um, <laughs> and actually, one of them isn't really a fact. It's more of just an open question. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go through it, and we'll just make the most out of this, right? Because um, I feel like I've been let down slightly by the team. Uh, but, <laughs> but here we go. Russell, you don't like scary movies, but if you had to pick, you'd say Jaws because you lived by a beach. Is that true? That's true, Nick. 
great. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, great. I, I, I would say that Jaws is probably not only just a, a good, scary film, but it's probably the best film ever made. Um, Ken, uh, we haven't got a fact for you. What's your favourite scary Ken, film? Alien. Right, great. Do you Alien 2. I'll, I'll change it. <laughs> Alien 2? Yeah. The, the, Alien Italian, two. the Italian sequel, unofficial sequel to Alien? Yes, that one. Rare, brilliant, yeah. Is um, it like Alien? Is it the same kind of Alien? It's nothing like Alien. It's oh. all set on Earth, and um, uh, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of weird. Um, but, yeah, good. If that's it's obscure, it's not as obscure as The Matador. <laughs> Are you texting? Fuck me, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, right, okay. If you're gonna order if you're gonna order drinks, yeah, try and not sit on the front row and uh, have your favourite <laughs> film be the matador. Um, <laughs> Jody, uh, your fun fact is you've watched a lot of horror films. Is that right? <laughs> that is right, Nick. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Okay, yeah. great. Well, there you go. <laughs> very fun. <laughs> These are our brave contestants, but who will survive and what will be left of them? <laughs> Let's start the quiz. Applause. <laughs> Round one is called Trick or Treat. To start us off, it's our regular true or false round, but with a Halloween-y twist. I will read out a series of facts about horror films, and all you need to do is tell me if they are true or false. OK, six bits of trivia in this round. Some of them too terrifying to be true, others too fearsome to be false. And there's two points for every correct answer. Ooh. Russell, we're going to start with you. Question one. Jason Voorhees is the killer in all of the Friday the 13th films today. Is that true or is that false? Uh, that is false, Nick. Um, OK. Um, um, ask if Russell likes the Friday the 13th. Do you like the Friday the 13th films? <laughs> he should elaborate on the answer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you want me to elaborate? Yeah, in the first film, I believe, spoiler alert, it was Jason's mother. Yeah, that's true. That's yep. good. And how do you know that? Well, that's the thing, Nick. I don't really watch a lot of uh, horror movies, but I do know that. Very famous. Uh, I know that Jason, you know, pops out uh, in, in the end. And, uh, you know, my, I have a mother. <laughs> and I suspected her of mass murder. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Many also, years. It's also the big question at the beginning of uh, Scream, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Is it the mom? Yeah. He, they, they say something about Jason Boys, and then it's like, it's the mom. Mm. Right, has anyone, so that, has anyone yeah. seen Friday the 13th? Yeah. yeah. It's not very good, that first one, is it? OK, so uh, the correct answer is, of course, everyone? False. False. Jason's mother, Pamela, is the killer in the original 1980 film, while Jason comes back in the sequel, and the sequel after that, and the sequel after that, and the sequel after that. Um, yeah, well, they, there's, a load of, there's a load of sequels. Um, mm. uh, and then there's a, there's a reboot. Um, Ken. This is question two. 1931's Dracula was the first ever Hollywood movie to be dubbed in Spanish. True or false? Oh, um, I'm going to go with false. And why, do, why do you think that it's false, Ken? I don't know. It just seems quite late. What, 1931? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought, you know. Like, maybe someone did it recreationally before that. Like, just a Spanish person. Mm. <laughs> Hang on, I don't understand what your, what your logic is here. 1931... Right, 90 years ago, right? Yeah. And you think that, that like, that, I mean, there's only been, like, talking pictures for about 10 years, yeah. but at that point, and you think What did the Spanish people watch? What did they watch? Hmm. Well, they would watch silent movies, and I guess, uh, yeah. I guess they weren't dubbed. In that, in that 10 years, they'd just be, they'd have to learn a different language. Okay, mm. so what was your answer, true or false? <laughs> no, it's oh, false. What's the question? It was false. 1931's Dracula was the first, first ever Hollywood movie to be dubbed in Spanish. Is it true or false? False. It's false. Um, and and yeah. the, correct, the correct answer is, yeah, the correct, well, okay, yeah, but the correct answer, <laughs> the producer's getting ahead of us now, but like, yeah, the correct answer is false. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Dracula is really interesting because, like, so they filmed Dracula, the English version, in the day, and at night they used the same sets to film the Spanish version. And because they had a little bit more fun and a little bit more time for their setups, the Spanish version is actually a lot more interesting uh, than the quite basic uh, English. That's language. two separate films. I thought you said they dubbed. 
No, they didn't. Oh, they didn't. That's, that's, the that's, that's why it's Oh, false, but there is something close. It's, it's this like, is a good so show. So what they did, they... <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's incredible. They filmed the big night... So the 1931 one with Bela Lugosi with the slip back yeah. that everyone thinks of when they think of Dracula. Universal famously didn't dub the film. They just used the same sets <laughs> and shot two versions of the movie at the same time. It wasn't at the same time. It was day and night, but sure. <laughs> Uh, the, English, <laughs> the, Same time. the English language version with Bela Lugosi filmed during the day and a Spanish film with a different cast was filmed at night and both films were released in 1931. If you're wondering, Dracula in Spanish is just Dracula, uh, except it's got an accent over the first A. Question three, Jody. A musical version of The Evil Dead was first staged in 2003 with a splatter zone where audiences were splashed with fake blood. Is that true or false? I'm going to go with true just because it sounds quite camp. I kind of want it to be true. But I've got to say my, my knowledge of, like, theatre versions of, of movies is, is scant. So I sure. accept that I could be wrong. Sure. Have you mm. ever seen The Evil Dead, the original? Yeah, I have. And have you seen Evil Dead 2? No. Why not? I don't know. I've, I've, I guess just something within me wasn't ready to dedicate more time to The Evil Dead. Oh. Sure. Well, I think you've done it wrong. I mean... I started with Army of Darkness and worked backwards, but um, uh, Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 2, Evil Dead. That's how I did it. I've seen the Elvis Dead. That's the only one I've seen. Yeah, but that's not a film, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but that's they do show film. bits of Evil Dead 2 in that show. That counts. Then. I think so they yeah. show bits of... Is it Evil Dead 2 that two. they show? It's 2, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyone right. see the Elvis Dead? <laughs> yeah. Ken, don't bother doing any crowd work. Come on, guys. They're absolutely uh. fucking shit tonight. <laughs> right, okay, Bill out. All right, have you got yeah. any trivia about the Evil Dead? Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you know the original Evil Dead was funded by dentists? Yeah. Sam Raimi raised funds for his horror movie by showing preview footage at dinner parties thrown by rich Hollywood dentists, and they invested in it. Stupid, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah. Is that respectable? Um, well, well, what they did was they, they, they went around with, the, oh, God, I'm so boring, aren't I? Am I boring? I mean, fuck me. I mean, you're here for a film thing, but, like, yeah, they made a short film called Within the Woods, and they took mm. around all these dentists, and they said, and all the dentists were like, this is disgusting. And they said, you don't have to watch it. You just make loads of money. And then they invested in it, and then everyone got their money back. And, yeah, it was... It was Really successful. The thing, the thing about the thing about Evil Dead is right. <coughs> Evil Dead came out the same year as The Shining, and there's a big quote on the poster for Evil Dead saying the most ferociously original horror movie of the year, and uh, by Stephen King, because he hated Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. <laughs> and so there's this wonderful poster quote on the Evil Dead where they were like really proud of it, but it, retrospectively, I think it was just. St Stephen King throwing shade at Stanley Kubrick. So, <laughs> um, the correct answer is true, Jody. Evil Dead the Musical debuted in 2003 and toured around America and Europe until 2017. Musical numbers in the show include Do the Necronomicon, Kevin in the Woods, and What the Fuck Was That? Um, OK, Russell. Um, on its original UK release, Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs were certified as too scary for under-16s to see on their own. Is that true or false? Ah, feels like a trick question, doesn't it? I, I gotta say, I'm just gonna say that I think you're trying to trick me. I gotta, I gotta go with my gut. I gotta say false. That's ludicrous. That's, that's crazy. You don't find it scary? Oh, you're making me doubt myself. Because <laughs> there's the witch. You remember the witch? There is the witch! And she literally uh, poisons an apple she and poisons kills an apple. Snow White. She Snow kills White. her. Oh. Snow White dies in the film. You know? Right. And, and I feel like that long ago, just, just dwarves were scary. Sure. <laughs> you know? This was not a pro the progressive time we live in now. Well, they, the little people, they had, probably. They had pickaxes. And, they did. Uh, um, and one of them was fucking grumpy. Um. <laughs> can I... Can I can I change it? What's well, I, I, I haven't. I, I mean, I wasn't listening to whether you've given me. Yeah. A, oh. I don't know if you've given well, me. Well, then I think I'll stick to my original answer, which was that is true, Nick. Um, <laughs> well, well, Russell, you'll be delighted to know that the correct answer is true. Oh. Yeah. Smashed it. 
the Disney film originally got an A certificate for its scary content in 1937, meaning children under 16 had to be accompanied by an adult. It was later cut down to a U and then finally re-released uncut with a U certificate 50 years later in 1987. That's after Snow White was featured in Gremlins, which is still a 15. <laughs> right. Um, I think Gremlins is quite scary. What's the film with the rabbits where they all rip each other apart? The rabbits that rip each other Watership apart? Watership Down. Watership oh, yeah, Down. Watership Down. Right, that, okay. that was allowed for kids. Yeah. Yeah, but that was, that was sort of like... That was later. But I mean, like, yeah. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is like she, she poisons an apple and, mm. uh, and, and, and kills the thing. You know, it's like a fairy tale, but with Watership Down, yeah. it like really mm. forced children to examine, you know, their own mortality in a way. It was, it, that was Did you ever see Ernest Scared Stupid? <laughs> no. I'm not kidding, that, that scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Um, right, okay, Ken, okay, okay, Ken. Oh, the yes. screenwriter of Night of the Living Dead was set on fire. <laughs> the screenwriter of Night of the Living Dead was set on fire during the making of the film. Is that true or false? Um. Hmm. I'll go true. Yeah, of course. Right. Why would you say true? Because it's so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> why wouldn't it be? Right? <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, great. You, yeah, but but the, the way that the question is posed is like, like uh, while they were filming, he accidentally got set on fire, right? Yeah. I don't, don't know what I'm going to read here, but I'm assuming that it's going to be he was, you know, doubling up as a stunt, co a stunt person, right? So the correct answer is true. Yes. During the scenes where the survivors pelt Molotov cocktails at the zombies, you can see co-writer John Russo was one of the flaming undead. It was a low-budget film, so Russo volunteered to be set on fire, despite having no training or protective equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone right. applauded that as well. I think that's really good. Is he all right? Did, uh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. <laughs> it doesn't say. Um, Jodie, the horror film Hereditary. Have you seen Hereditary? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I loved Hereditary. Yeah. I thought it was very good. I didn't. I don't want to spoil it for people. Didn't see the headless moment coming. No. I won't specify which headless, headless. moment. No. Yeah. I thought that that was the best bit. Yeah. Because you go in thinking it's going to be all about one thing, and then halfway through you're like, oh, yeah. not even a halfway through. It's about quarter of the way through. Right? Yeah. So mm. soon. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Very well, good. Uh, the horror film Hereditary is so named because it sounds like how the little girl in the film. Dies. Is that true or false? <laughs> what? Hereditary. <laughs> Her head hit to tree. Fuck's sake. Her hereditary. 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 There's people moaning here, right? Like, 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 like you could do better, right? Let's, let's not lie to ourselves. The reason you're here is because you can't entertain yourselves, all right? So just fucking get on board, all right? This is what we're doing. We're doing it for an hour. Enjoy it or fuck off. Right, here we go. Don't go, don't go. Right, brilliant, right. Um, so what were you saying, Jodie? I mean, listen, I'm going to go with false, yeah. but only because... If they were going to do it for that reason, they might as well have called it, like, Natalogy or, like, <laughs> one of the other ways that she contributed to her death. So I'm going to go with false. The correct answer is, of course, it's false. It's false. Um, Hereditary. Her, her, her I'm going to call it that from now on, right? Hereditary. Have you ever seen Hereditary? <laughs> 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 so, director Ari Aster was denied the fan theory that the film is named because her head hit a tree, mostly because the daughter is decapitated by a telephone pole <laughs> and not a tree. <laughs> uh, but let me think, if you go back in time far enough, that, that fucking telephone pole was a tree. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so good luck unhearing that from now on. Anyway, after <laughs> round one, Bilal, what are the scores? The scores are that everyone has four points each, all level thus far. Congratulations. Um, give them a round of applause. <laughs> this has never happened before. Oh, really? I think it's normally like everyone is either like level pegging with zero or like one person's got a one. Considering that you guys like know virtually nothing about films, yeah. you're doing better than, than every single other contestant yeah. that's ever been on this show so far. Ignorance is a superpower. Oh.
<laughs> round two is called Sounds Like Scary Movies. This is the music round. Contestants will hear three clips from three suitably Halloween-y movies. And, and what we want you to do is listen to the clips and write down your answers and get one point for correctly naming the title song and one point for the spooky soundtrack it belongs to. Nobody cares who wrote the song, just what song it is and what film it is. There are three songs in this round, so there are six points up for grabs. But if you want a bonus point for each one, just come up with the name of um, the, the, the year that each of those films were made. Oh. Um, cool. uh, and then you'll get like an extra point each for every oh. single one of them. Oh. Uh, that's just me being generous. Um, I don't know how that's going to affect the scoring and, and you, but you're going to have to think on your feet a little bit, Bill Allen, <laughs> and earn your keep. We're going to hear all three clips now in a row, so think fast. When you're ready, Bill Al, with your finger, play the music. Here's the music. Are you right, Ken? I have no idea what, what, what those were. That was a horror movie. You kind of went into yourself a little bit. It was a Trying to access the Matrix. Was, was, was that a horror movie? Yeah. Um, it yeah, like a it's kind movie. of in the title as well. No, I okay. don't know. Okay, right, we're going to go across. Uh, Russell, what was your answer for track one? Uh, track one, I believe, is from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes. And it was, I, I want to say it's like transvestite from Transylvania. Uh, yeah, it's not Something that. Something like that? It's not called that, but we'll see how everyone else does and see, <laughs> okay. see if you get a point. Ken, what, what did you put down for track one? Um, nothing. I put down nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So you might be able to get away with that, Russell. And, and Jody, what did you put down? Um, I got Rocky Horror, and uh, as a drag artist, I have let myself down here, but I couldn't remember the name of the song, so I just went with Big Camp Drag Time. Hmm. Well, I guess yeah. Russell gets... Russell no, gets he point. doesn't get a point, because he didn't get it right. Well, what's um, the, the answer is Sweet Transvestite from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh. Um, wow. But, um, but sure, okay, for tra well, yeah, no, I think he gets one point. Um, yeah, Excellent. and put Jodie down for one point. And That's Ken, kind. you can put him down for no points. No, no points. For uh, um, Russell, what did you put for track two? Uh, I, I didn't get anything for track two. Nothing for track two? Nothing. No guess? Sorry, guys. No. Do you want to guess? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe it was uh, a bigger hit over here in England. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, what did you get I, for track is two? It, is it, uh, are we just skipping Ken? <laughs> <laughs> are we just assuming, are we assuming yeah. that Ken just didn't Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was worth the, worth uh, the time that we'd put into it. He, but he knows the film. I have no, okay, right, Ken. I don't know if it's right, though. Come on, Ken. I what? put Poltergeist. Oh, fuck you. Um, <laughs> Absolute, absolute waste of space. Right, okay. Um, no, it's not Poltergeist, all right? Um, Jody, what have you put down? Is it, is it Tubular Bells? It is Tubular Bells! Yes. Absolute legend. From which film? Um, I, I didn't know the film, I went with the Teletubbies. Oh, <laughs> um, fucking sorry. hell! It was giving me like Stephen King vibes, but I just couldn't yeah. It wasn't couldn't Stephen place King, it, it wasn't oh, Stephen King. It was uh, Tubular Bells from The Exorcist. Oh, okay. oh. Um, and then, uh, have I, uh, yeah, and then uh, track, track three, Russell, what, yeah. what have you put down for this? Uh, yeah, I just want to say, that Tubular Bells, we didn't have that in America, definitely. But I, I, you definitely I, had The Exorcist in America. It was an American I, I don't book. think our it bells are tubular film. shaped. It was an American classic movie. We have bell-shaped bells in America. But, but you know, tubular, what the hell's I think, going on over here? I, I think that that is a cultural thing. I think Tubular Bells was like a rave hit in the 90s in England. I think it? it's a very obscure entire album. Is that correct? Tubular Bells? Yeah. No, I don't think it's an obscure album. I think it's instantly recognizable. How did I lose everyone in the room? I, I had the crowd. I lost them on two. <laughs> the room turned on me with tubular bells. I got nothing for three. Don't take it bad. They didn't turn on you. They were never with you, right? I um, um I have nothing for three. You got nothing for and three. I, at and I and I purposely did that in solidarity with my friend Ken here. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Ken, have you got anything for this? I uh, put scream. Uh, you put what? Scream. You put scream. Yeah. <laughs> The, the fucking <laughs> so okay, uh, Jody. What have you what have you put? I I guess that the the song was called Scary Little Girl. Oh for fuck's sake! <laughs> this and, is um, a fucking bag of shit. Right. So, I'm sorry. I put, for film I put Frozen. I <laughs> fucking Frozen. That sounds like Frozen. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. Yeah. One is, point. 
Do you know yeah. what? That well, is I'll almost, put it down. That's probably the most chilling thing that's happened all fucking Halloween. <laughs> is that, okay, uh, it, was, it was the song Somewhere That's Green from uh, the movie Little Shop of Horrors, which, oh. of course, is a horror film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you, none of you got any points for that at all. Um, I, I played the dentist in a school production of uh, Little Shop of Horrors. That's the best bit. It is yeah. the best bit. Um, uh, Did yeah. you fund the evil dead in it? No. <laughs> Um, that's very, that's um, actually very good. I don't. Did I, oh, I see good. what did I fund the? Yeah. the I thought it was just gibberish. I thought he was just. <laughs> I thought he was just trying to chip in, and my blood was boiling, but I hid it, and I realised what you've done there. And uh, yeah, it's really good, really good. Uh, we'll Thank cut you. around that. Um, <laughs> interesting thing about somewhere that's green. Does anyone know the interesting thing about somewhere that's green? No. Um, it's written by uh, the same people that wrote the music for anyone. The Little Mermaid, which is why Somewhere That's Green oh. is exactly the same song as Part of This World. Is that right? Was that the name of the song in Little Mermaid? Yeah. What's it called? Like part of Your World, Part of Your World. It's the same song, they just reused it. Um, there you go, that's my fun fact. Uh, they're not all going to be fun, so uh, <laughs> brace yourselves for that. <laughs> Bilal, have you got some trivia about The Little Shop of Horrors? I've just done my trivia. Yours was fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors is based on a staged musical spoof of a 1960 Roger Corman horror film. Bill Murray cameos as a dentist patient, based on a pain-obsessed character played by a young Jack Nicholson in the original film. That is true. I didn't know that. About Did you not know that? Do you know about the... Oh, my God, I'm so boring this week. Um, <laughs> the, oh, interesting, depending on why you're tuning in. Um, but Little Shop of Horrors was a film uh, that, they, that they made because there was a film set that they were going to tear down over the weekend, and then Roger Corman said, just give us the weekend, and he, made, he wrote a film, and they filmed the original black and white Little Shop of Horrors over one weekend using the sets that they had. Uh, I think it was The Shop Around the Corner was the film, and then they reused the, the sets, and then, um, and then later on... How long's the film? It's like, I don't know, 75 minutes? It's got Jack Nicholson in it. Mm. Yeah, you said that. <laughs> right. Um, hey, Bill Al, what are the scores? In third place, Ken has four. <laughs> in second place, it's Russell with five. <laughs> and in first place, it's Jody with six. Six points. <laughs> yeah. What a brilliant uh, round. Round three is called What's in the Box? What's in the Box Office? <laughs> um, this round is all about the box office, yeah? Uh. Um, the, 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 the cinema box office, though. Um, horror has always been part of cinema, but can our contestants name the horrors that got the most bums on the edge of their seats? Tonight, we want you to name the top 10 highest grossing horror movie franchises worldwide as of October 2022. <laughs> Still miss You're asking that them to name 10 films. Yeah, I want them to franchises. name franchises. Uh, is that what I've just said? Yeah. The top, the top ten highest grossing horror movie franchises worldwide. Franchises. All right, we're not looking for individual films, just the franchises that have made the most amount of money to date. And we'll ask each contestant in turn to name a horror movie series that they think made the top ten. Okay, when you hear this noise. Movie. Oh, uh, it means you've got one right, okay? okay. Each answer in the top ten is worth... Um, Hang on a minute. Um, each answer in the top ten is worth one point. What did you say? Two. What? <laughs> Look, mate, if you're going to shout out, say it loud enough so I can fucking hear. Two points. What do you mean two points? Ten. What? <laughs> what? Is, is he part of the team? <laughs> Shut up. That's a, <laughs> but when you hear... That was a super fan. I don't give a shit if it's a super fan. Each answer in the top ten is worth one point. Or two points. Oh, you're right, actually. Yeah, it's two points. <laughs> <laughs> if the franchise oh, is placed between six and ten, it's worth one point. Yeah? yeah? And if it's placed between, uh, if I'm right in thinking this, one and five in the box office, then it's worth two points. Cool. <laughs> two points. Um, so um, so if, you get, if you get one wrong, if you get one answer wrong, or you repeat an answer we've already had, or you just take too long to think of one, we'll hear this noise, Bilal. Well, you should have eaten your breakfast. 
<laughs> What's that from? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Each contestant has three lives before they're eliminated from this round and we'll continue until we've named all ten movies, franchises, or there's just one contestant still standing. Does everybody understand what's going on now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. So the lowest scoring player overall will be eliminated at the end of this round. Russell goes first. Well, that's a spoiler. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Right, Russell. You, it's your turn first, Russell. Right, okay. Starting with Russell, the top ten highest grossing horror franchises worldwide. What do we think is in the top ten? Uh, Halloween. Uh, why did you say that? Because um, it's Halloween. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's number eight. So that's what... <laughs> um, One point. Okay, so Ken. Saw. Um, saw. Um... Um, <coughs> yes, yeah, number five. That's two points. That's wow. Oh my god! He's back in the game! Come on, come on. All right, Jody, Jody, Jody. Jody, Jody, Jody. Yeah, it's um, paranormal activity. Paranormal activity. That's fucking, that's a good guess. <coughs> and it's one point. That's sixth, sixth. Number six out number of all six. the franchises. That's okay, okay, Russell, we're back to you. We're back to you. Right, right. Nightmare on Elm Street. Why you should have eaten your breakfast. Yeah, oh. see, no, saw that. Not, that's a good guess. It was, it was an all right guess, and I think if it was like 30 years ago, it would be up there. <laughs> but, um, but they haven't made one in a very long Wait, time. Wait, sorry, this, uh, this is all time. Yeah. What? Yeah. I literally, I literally couldn't. <laughs> I literally couldn't have been any clearer. As of October 20, as of Saturday today. Um, yeah, it's a, it's of all time. So, Ken. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, I mean. Why well, you should have eaten your breakfast? I, I mean, I mean, I don't think that that's a bit. I, it's, it's a good. Fr well, it's not even a good franchise. It's a good film. How many are, are there? Well, there's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Then there's Texas Chainsaw. Then there is... It's called Texas Chainsaw. Then there's... Uh, is, isn't, there, isn't there one just called Chainsaw Massacre? And then there was one that was on Netflix last year. Yeah. And there was another one called Leatherface. I think there's about eight or nine. Paris, Texas. Paris, Texas yeah. is not one of them. The and neither is Saw, or if there's a film. There's a band called Texas. Or is that just that woman? <laughs> no, I it's think not it a band. It was, I think it was a band. Yeah. It's a band. Yeah. <laughs> so Jody. Uh, wrong turn. Why well, you should have eaten your breakfast? No. Wrong there's just turn. so many of them. Like they're a bit mm. crap, but there's so many. Going back to Russell again. Uh, name a film franchise. In the horror genre, okay. and um, and go on. Final destination. Right, just it's one point. It's one point. It's one point. It's one the last point. Because yeah, it was number. <laughs> it was number ten. Right, it was number ten, number 10 out of all the franchises. Ken. Scream. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Number nine. Very you were good. faster than me Very that time, yeah. Bill. Yeah, I had to be. I didn't, I, Just what? to say, we're not doing very well with that's the top num, that's five. That's number nine. Yeah, what the, f what the fuck are they? Yeah. I feel like we've named all of them. Yeah. yeah. Haven't we done, we're done with the franchises. It's weird because it's one of your favourite, not your, but <laughs> one of yours favourite films. And, uh, and it's someone that's only seen eight films and they haven't, <laughs> they haven't even mentioned their fucking favourite <laughs> film yet. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to spontaneously go with Alien. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Two points, two points. It's number two in the charts, all right. Okay. Oh, thanks, Ken. Um, no worries. Uh, so, uh, is that back to Russell now? Yeah. Yeah, right, okay. Um, and again, it's, uh, you've already talked about this film. I, like, I feel like you talked about it so long that <laughs> I'm sick to fucking death of you mentioning it now, <laughs> right? But, but come on, Russell. <sighs> the Matador. <laughs> well, you should have eaten your breakfast. No, hey, that was fake. That was for yeah. comedy. Ken, it's um, Jaws. No, Ken, uh, we've got to move on. We don't on do comedy on this show. We don't do comedy on this show. This is we have we have real film buffs that tune in and they just want yeah. film content, <laughs> right? And I am very proud that I've kept my ego out of this. And I'm just delivering top quality entertainment for, you know, the Mark Commode audience, you know what I mean? Um, 
So, so uh, unfortunately, it wasn't the Matador. Ken, have you got an answer? Uh, Friday the 13th. You an idiot, mate. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> You fucking hell! Oh, you should have eaten your breakfast. It was right there for you. He even said it. I don't want. I don't want to be cheap. I don't want to be cheap. I'm trying to help you. I don't want to be cheap. You've got to help yourself, Ken. Uh, you can have it. Fucking hell, Jody! What's that one? I don't give a shit. <laughs> They're like they put they put all those actors in the wood. And they, t- they made them film it themselves. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? It was like a the big cult hit. Hey, 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 hey. Project. Yeah, Blair Witch Project. Oh, what was I saying at the beginning? No <laughs> shouting out. No shouting out. I don't want any well, shouting in this room. Breakfast. <laughs> no, it's not. It's... <laughs> <laughs> the Blair Witch Project is not one no. of the most successful <laughs> franchises. I would have thought that. They, they, you each only have one life left. Okay, oh. right, so they're all about to die. Russell. Well, uh, well Joyce. Yes! Oh, God. That's one I point. Thought, I thought none of us were going to say Joyce, just to see how far we could push yeah. it. But oh, that, that is... Sorry, guys. But, but that's weird, isn't it? Because you said Nightmare on Elm Street, and they made eight of those films, and, um, and that's not in the top ten. That's but a they blockbuster. Only made, but, and, and the last one was 2010, right? So that was 2010 money that Nightmare on Elm Street was making. Yeah. But the last Jaws film was 1987, and they only made four of those. Oh. So that's bonkers. That that's a blockbuster. In the, that's in the top ten. Oh, I'm so, I was just such a lonely child. That was the problem. <laughs> Ken. Yes. What is your guess? Uh, on your con- last life, remember? Come on, Ken. The Conjuring. <gasps> oh, my fucking yeah. God. Oh, my God. That's number one. Conjured it up. Okay, Ken, I don't know how to <laughs> judge you anymore. Um, and I am judging you. Right, okay, uh, Jodie, um, there's only two answers left. Uh, I'm going to go human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> that means... Well, you should have eaten your breakfast. Uh, We're talking about in the top five horror movie franchise. That means that all of our parents went to see it as well, right? Honestly, um, I, I'm, I'm out of franchise knowledge, and I know at this point, it's like anything that I know there was more than one film off. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, go sure. for it. I don't think you're out of the game yet, but you're not allowed to answer this round anymore. Mm. All right. So, um, so back to Russell. Yeah. Got one life left. Got two to, two to pick from. Uh, one of the franchises is based on a video game. Yeah. Resident Evil. Yeah. Yes. Oh, That's so obvious. Yeah. Right, Ken, you could, you could, got, you got a clue for me for this one. Uh, uh, we've we've talked about um, we've talked about uh, the the gu- uh, Night the, of the Living Dead. No, don't wait for the fucking clue <laughs> before you lose a life, Ken. Oh. Sure, fine. We talked about that. Though. I, I mean, yeah, but like, okay, it's based on uh, a book. And we've talked about the author of the book already tonight. Oh, Stephen King. So what would be the... Um, what the Shining? Be? No. Uh, well, you should have eaten your breakfast. Shining isn't a franchise. Yeah, but but it should it might be. have made loads, so... <laughs> <laughs> they could have made loads, <laughs> You think that's what they did? <laughs> they made one yeah. film, and they were like, we're going to yeah. make nine of these. <laughs> and we went, Actually, we've made so much money on the first one, we're not going to bother with the rest. Uh, yeah, it no, a secret franchise. No, yeah. it was it was it. Oh, oh. Yeah. I know, yeah, and it's the shortest yeah. title out of all of them. Yeah. Um, that means that Russell has beaten the box office. Well done, Russell. <laughs> what this draws at the end of round three? So at the end of round three, Ken is in last place with eight. Oh, oh. that is a shame. It's I was harsh on you, Ken, but I wanted you to do well. It's okay. 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 In second place, it's Jody with nine. Okay. And that means Russell's currently top with ten. Okay. Wow. Well done, Russell. Thank you. Unfortunately, uh, that means that Ken, uh, you've been caught out by our killer quiz, and you're not going to make it to the final round. Have you had a uh, lovely time? Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so good. Um, yeah? yeah? Well, let's have a big round of applause to Ken Chen. Yeah. Do I leave now? No, no. Um, 
no, that's the awkward thing about it. You've got to stay no, there. Okay. You've got All to right. stay there. Okay. Conjuring, that was good when he got that. It yeah. was amazing that you got that. I think there was not one person in the room that wasn't absolutely gobsmacked that you got the number <laughs> one uh, franchise of yeah. all time. Well done. <laughs> Our remaining contestants is uh, Jody and Russell um, are about to stick their head in our big barrel of horror movie trivia and go bobbing for answers. Oh, <laughs> just keep it, just keep it tight. Do you know what I mean? Like, each contestant will have 60 seconds on the clock to name as many correct answers as they can. It's one point per correct answer, and we'll start with the contestant currently in first place, Russell. Uh, get ready to start the timer. Yeah, tell yeah. me when to go. And go now, Bilal. Right, Freddy's Revenge is a sequel to which 1980s horror classic? Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Fuck me. Who directed the 1999 film Sleepy Hollow? Uh, Tim Burton. Which 1980s horror movie features the quote, they're here? Uh, Tommy Knockers. Fucking, someone's already said it. The Babadook, Wolf Creek, and Lake Mungo are all horror films from which country? Uh, country? America. <sighs> Who wrote and directed the horror films Get Out, Us, and Nope? Uh, uh, Jordan Peele. Complete the film trilogy. I know what you did last summer. I still know what you did last summer and what. Uh, can you remind me again what you did last summer? <laughs> 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 what type of, don't laugh what type of building is the Ghostbusters headquarters uh, fire station who plays Dracula in Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula um, um, uh, he was Sid Vicious fucking hell uh, Gary Oldman uh, in which European city is the sequel to an American werewolf in London set which European city uh, France <laughs> City time's Paris. Up. Right, time's up. Are you going to accept that? So, no, of course oh. fucking not. In which, in which European city? Um, Europe. Um, <laughs> right, okay, so how'd it go? So you got like Freddy's Under Revenge, pressure. yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, Tim Burton, uh, it was Poltergeist, so you got that one wrong. Uh, it was Australia, you got that one wrong. It was Jordan Peele, it was I, I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. Um, uh, it was a fire station, correct? It was Gary Oldman, and it's of course, everyone? Paris. It was Paris. It was Which Paris. I, I did. Um, <laughs> no, that means that you got it right. No, yeah, it's just okay. nice to do, you know. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, Jody, um, are you ready? Yeah. Are really you ready, ready Bilal, with, with Oh, yeah. Al? Right. Leatherface is the killer in which horror movie series? Friday the 13th. Fucking hell. On which oh. continent is John Carpenter's The Thing set? I don't know. Oh, my God. In which 2006 horror remake does Nicolas Cage scream, Not the bees! The Wicker Man. What is the title of the 2019 sequel to The Shining? Oh. Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> okay, born on Halloween 1961, who directed the New Zealand zombie comedy Brain Dead? Fuck knows. No. In Candyman, how many times do you say Candyman's name to make him appear? Three. Complete the film trilogy, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and what? Really Evil Dead. Wow. <laughs> who, plays, who plays the mummy in the Hammer Horror film version of The Mummy, Peter Cushing, or Christopher Lee? Christopher Lee. Which 1980s vampire movie takes place in the town of Santa Carla, California? Dracula. Which 2021 <laughs> horror movie takes place on a beach that makes visitors rapidly age, and the film does as well? Oh. Is that, was that the time? You can say it, you can say it. Well, yeah, but you If can. you know it. Old? Yes! Yeah. That's time. Okay, right. So ah. I knew that was stressful, man. I don't want to raise your hopes. Yeah. You did do very badly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but, knew, I knew some of those. <laughs> All right, Ken. <laughs> You had your moment and you blew it, <laughs> right? Did. So, uh, so uh, Leatherface is the killer in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. On which continent is John Carpenter's The Thing set? Everyone? Antarctica. Antarctica. In which, yeah, got the Wicker Man. Uh, what is the title of the 2019 sequel to The Shining, everyone? Okay, born on Halloween, 1961. Who directed New Zealand zombie comedy Brain Dead? Peter Jackson. Uh, do it together or not at all, all right? <laughs> right, in Candyman, how many times do you say Candyman's name to make him appear? It's five, five times, five, five times. You're five, thinking of five. Beetlejuice. <laughs> all right, complete the trilogy, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and my favourite film of all time. Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness. <laughs> Who plays them? You got this one? Yeah. Christopher Lee. It was Proud Christopher Lee. That. He plays nice. Dracula. Yeah, yeah, the 1980s vampire movie that takes place in Santa Carlo is... Oh, 
Um, <laughs> Lost Boys. Um, <laughs> it's like, even, even the, the fun bit when you're allowed to participate, you've taken all the joy out of it. <laughs> which, no, which 2021 horror movie takes place on a beach that yet old? You got that. And um, uh, how many of the movies in the Halloween series are simply called Halloween, guys? Three. Three of them. Three of them. Three of them. Three. There's Halloween, Zombies <laughs> Halloween, and 2018 Halloween. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, what are the points at the end of that? So, at the end of that, with 15 points, <laughs> it's Russell. <laughs> Russell, what, what are you going to do with your life now that you've won this? Well, I don't think there's much I can do. I mean, this, mm. is, um, this is probably the pinnacle for me right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, give him a round of applause. Yay. Um, let's hear it for everyone that we had on tonight. Is everyone done a good job? <laughs> You've been listening to the Film Quiz Podcast. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Goodbye. Have a good night. And remember, guys, uh, keep watching their movies. <laughs>You've been listening to the Film Quiz podcast hosted by me, Nick Helm. The show was recorded, edited and mastered by Louis Fitton. Question writer was Mark Harrison. Assistant producer was Teddy Coward. Guest booker was Emma Turner. Thanks to Steve, Stuart and Jake, our camera people. Our exec producer is Simon Brew. And our producer is Howard Cohen. The Film Quiz podcast is a Why Now and Film Stories production. Hosted by me, Nick Helm.